But um, you 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 you're singing. But what about the writing part? How did that skill come about? The first song I ever wrote was the song that Chauncey and I wrote with uh, for ourselves, just two. Yeah. That we gave to Bernard, that he gave to Teddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was the that was the very first song he. Well, I don't know about Chauncey, but it was the first song I wrote. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you're saying you you just just come up with words and just hope it works, or did you who did you play? You know <laughs> yeah. This is what's crazy. <laughs> Chauncey and I sat in my mother's living room dining room table. We didn't have any original music, right? Mm -hmm. So we 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 took today's song, "Stood Me Up," right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we listening to "Stood Me Up" with their lyrics and everything, and wrote our own song to the music. Oh. totally separate well not i'm saying now the music wasn't separate so we, we're blocking out what they're saying but listen to the music yeah listen to the music and we came up with our own song oh okay that's 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 wild like i don't think i could do that today for real was, <laughs> that <was crazy. laughs> but that's how you because it I, mean, I guess what's fascinating because I, I do hear um i heard writers say things different where they they the, the music comes first and then based on the music, they put the lyrics. Um, but then Sometimes. you have some others who, who the, the words, the, the, the words just keep coming in with a melody, and then right. they and, and then they take it to the guy who writes the song, or the person who writes the song that, that brings out the music. But in yeah. your, in, but so did you then? Was that how you started to learn how to write that one experience? Yeah, pretty much. How did pretty you then much. move it forward then? The writing? Yeah, the writing. How did you then move? Did you, you, you well, I mean, like I said, Bernard Bell, like he was he was a music producer, he was the man, he you know, he 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 influenced me and we got together. I learned I, I pretty much learned writing from Bernard Bell and a and a gentleman by the name of Ronald Scruggs. Like just just being around, you know what I mean? Could you play anything at those at that time? Could you play any no. instrument? No, I mean I, I'm still not a musician, you know. But I could I could play around enough with sequencing to you know get an idea. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not I'm not like them. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, no. No. I mean, yeah. Not not like just like coming out with the keys and stuff like that. But I just thought right. there was the the person who writes the lyrics, but then also having the the melody that comes in that it's like. Because if you see like Babyface would, you know, when it's a Babyface song, he's probably played the guitar and he's writing to his, he's right. writing the music and the lyrics. When right. you're composing a song, would it, would you be writing just the lyrics and somebody else predominantly does the music or could, would you get credited for doing both? Yeah, most of the time, like I said, most of the time with the Jaheen stuff, that's pretty much me and my, my man Wes. But um, lately, you know, I've been like getting tracks from people, from producers, and penning pretty okay. much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but I, you, I mean, yeah. a lot of you know the Darnell stuff. That's pretty much stuff that we came up with. Big shout out to my man Big Worm for uh, blessing us with those keys on that joint too. Okay. But um, yeah. Okay. I, I I guess if we just just drop back slightly, so you're sitting and watching. <laughs> But um, today coming out with him and me, you know, blowing mm -hmm. up the charts. Are you watching it? it? That's my man. That's my guys. I should have been. Oh, well, what were your thoughts? Did, did you get to, I mean, would you, you know, how was the whole community when you see, you see the guys really ripping oh, it up? And oh, having... they, had, they had Englewood on smash. Bob, <laughs> they were killing it. Bob, Chief, Wes and Love. Um, yeah, but I mean, like I said, when, when Chauncey and I saw that, He's like, man, want this? Like, we, you know, we could, we could do this. Man. We could, let's put a group together and let's get it done. Had Nitty and, and Riff come out as well? Yeah, Riff was, was yeah, Riff was out by now. Nah. You know what? I'm not even sure. If Riff was out <laughs> by but you know, we all had the same mentality after we after we saw today do it. 
it wasn't like a Regina Bell, you know. What okay, because like, she was on know, a different level. She was like, Whitney. Is special. <laughs> like you, you know that's gonna happen, you know what I mean? But after our home, after our boys did it, like, like ah, we we could do it. If they could do it. We could do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was just pretty much how it was. <laughs> that's how it went. But but you said after the the, the the Teddy stuff didn't work out, so you and Chauncey sort of split. So and you joined the Flex. Did you then keep an eye out to see what, what was up with Chauncey or? Yeah, well, at, yeah, that's around the time where Chauncey Chauncey was already working with Teddy on Black Street, and now according to Teddy and Chauncey, they wanted me to be a part of the original Black Street as well, but. I was already in the situation with Marley at Universal, so I couldn't do it if, you know, yeah. even though they didn't want me to do it, I, I was already obligated. Yeah. So, yeah, so they, they put Blackstreet together and blew yeah. up. So, I mean, going back, because, you know, a lot of people probably, we don't hear much about Marley Mall this generation, even in the 90s, probably don't right. don't hear about him as much as, as those from the late 80s to the mid 90s would always know about. He was, right. you, know, you know, Teddy, even Teddy props, gives him props about one of the people who really did, took hip hop to, to another level, especially with a lot of the yeah. LL joints yeah. and, and, and stuff. Um, you know, you've worked with Teddy and, and other producers. What was Marley like in the studio? Molly, Molly is crazy too on the MP, the uh, SB twelve hundred. Like he's, it, I mean, it's a whole nother thing. Like Molly wasn't really a musician. That's who we had Darren for, Darren Lighty. Okay. But, um, yeah, Molly, Molly was crazy with beats, man. Like even still, even to today, he sent me something not too long ago. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Working with LL back in those days, I mean, he'd already done um, I'm Bad and he's, you know, I Need Love and he was, you know, you know, really one of the, you know, you know, as a, not just as a hip hop artist, but he was as a, as a symbol, he was, you know, he was, he was up there. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, Behind sir. the scenes when the camera's off working. Oh, that was a, he's a funny dude. <laughs> <He's> a funny <laughs> guy. <laughs> Yeah, we had a we had a good we had a, a good time recording all that stuff with L. Yeah. Smart too. Intelligent man. Oh, business wise and everything and Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's just he, he's he's smart. He's a smart dude. What did you learn when you were part of the flex before you guys, you know, um as business about the industry? Because we, you know, one of the sad things I've um that has come across with a lot of the interviews I've had is everyone saying about going in and you know losing publishing losing all this in you know, management fees because they just didn't know what did you learn from your <laughs> let me let me let me back up a little this is this is what happened with flex and the deal it was it was a publishing issue like so we were doing the writing and, and most of the producing but you know entwined in the deal was a situation where they wanted the publishing and that's where it fell apart like we we, we just couldn't do that and that's, you that's how it fell apart. did you know uh, i mean because I, and i guess it's the you know people uh, what we're learning as fans is that it is a music business yes. and the music industry is the entertainment the singing but it's the business back end where you, you you know how much money you get per record sells your points your advances yeah. the publishing now i you know i i do wonder if i you know was 12 years old and somebody gives me a, a billion dollars and says here's your money i wouldn't know how to spend it and i do wonder when you get into the industry you know no one goes into school to say this is what the, the publishing this is ownership and stuff like right. catalogs and stuff how, when did you learn about what okay, and we need to be careful about what we own and our publishing and all that stuff. How long, how, how did you learn it? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, again, I would say during that situation because Marley was more like a, a, a brother to us. Like if Marley had to go out of town to, to, let's say he went to Miami to work, he would have me come and, and house sit for him. You know wow. what I mean? Like I would stay at his crib and, and watch the house while he was gone. Yeah. So when it came to the, like I said, we were we were cool. Like we hung together, you know what I'm saying? We always in the city working. Mm -hmm. And when it came 
to doing that business, you know, at that time, it was like, you know, we get the contract and we like, nah, this, this, because you know, he had a manager at the time as well. So, you know, we looking at the manager like, yo, like, what are you trying to do? Like, and so we go to Molly. We like, yo, man, this, this, she got this in this agreement. Like, this is, this is what? And he was like, nah, yeah, I'm going to talk to her about that. I shouldn't be in there. And so, you know, the next time the contract came up, we saw the contract, it's still there. <laughs> so we like, oh. Molly, man, like, what's going on? <laughs> and he's like, basically, you know, it came to a point where he's like, well, you know, this this is how the business is, you know what I'm saying? And this this is what it has to be. And that just, it didn't work. It didn't work for us. So that was pretty much the end of that. No. But like you said, it's the, that's how that's how the business is. See, me, if if I go, through, well, I'm, I'm going through some things. So if it's somebody coming up, you know, if I'm bringing somebody up, right? Yeah. I'm me. I'm the type of person I'm gonna make sure that they don't have. If I, if it's at all possible, if I'm in a position to make it better for that person than it was for me, that's what I'm gonna do. Not everybody thinks that way. A yeah. lot of people think like, well, it took me this long. It's, it's got, you know, that's how it is. It's gonna take you this. It's gonna take you that long. Yeah. And that's 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 not cool. <laughs> I interviewed um, Tabitha, Tabitha Duncan from Cut Close, and she explained uh, the same thing. You know, they they you know, record deal and publishing deal taking half of their publishing, and then and it was that sense of, well, somebody messed us over, so we're going to almost get get it back from you. And then once we've yeah, gotten our stuff sure. from you, then you got to have to mess up the next person, almost like that sort of vicious cycle. And that's what it is. I just don't understand it. Like somebody took all your money. And so you're gonna turn around and take all my, you know, you you remember yeah. how that felt, yeah, right? But you're gonna do it anyway. You're gonna do it to me because it was done to you. And yeah, that's how you justify it. <laughs> no, that's, wow. that's, that's But then, uh, as I said, contracts can be big and they can be very small print. Did you go as a group to a lawyer to say, look, read through this, tell us what we need to do, or did you guys go? No, through? No, no, no. We, we, we got attorneys. We got okay. Attorneys. And they pointed out that look at what they're saying and stuff like that. Right. Pretty much. Like, no, hey, no. Right <laughs> you don't want to do that. No. You yeah. Don't do that. Now, the, the thing is then there is, and I've heard other people who say, even though this is the case, we don't want to miss our opportunity. Yeah. What made you guys feel as if you're not, even if this is our opportunity at this point, we're going to take that brave decision to say, stand up and, and protect our own because it because the relation like i said we were we were friends and brothers you know what i mean so moving forward it you know that the whole relationship changed after that because you know like we, we're looking at the situation like yo you know like we family but it it you know not everybody saw it that way and that changed that just that just messed up the, the whole thing it messed up the relationship then what did you do after that? Then, after after well, that, no. So you know, so when when that sort of the flex sort of fell apart, what did you then do? Did you guys just keep well, together? Well, we'll just produce people. Yeah, or we'll... the flex the flex didn't fall apart. It, the deal fell the deal apart. fell apart. Okay, just be we as a, a group. To work. Right, we continued to work work on original music, like I said, the writing and producing. And then, um, you know, that wasn't going all that great as far as the deal situation. And then I got the call for, for Black Street while I was still in that situation. <clears throat> yeah. Back in that situation, did you then think, well, this isn't too bad because, you know, I don't have to be on the road. You know, we have publishing we, 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 and stuff. Or, well, did you then think, no, nah, I still want to sing? Or what was your thinking? What was what do you mean before Black Street? Yeah, you before Black Street. Yeah, when when the, yeah, so when when the when the deal with Marley didn't go through, and so you weren't going to get to become a, a group, and you guys were doing production as a group as a production okay. group. Did you think, well, this isn't too bad? I mean, did you think about being a full time writer producer? Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, I I enjoy being in the studio. Like, I would prefer that than being on the stage. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I, I enjoy singing, but I'm not like really the entertainer kind of, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? The flash, I, that ain't me at all. Okay. So, 
so yeah, that was that was cool. You know, we we got actually we signed a publishing deal sometime during that time. So yeah, we we focused on writing and and trying to get songs placed <clears throat> at yeah. that time. And so you guys, so you, and you you signed a good publishing deal, I I, I guess. Um, is it the three of you together, or is it yeah. individual? It was it was the three of us together. Okay. We signed it together until. Oh, well, I'll let you lead the conversation. No, no, no. Go ahead. Don't until. <laughs> well, I was gonna say until until, you know, I did the Black Street thing, and then we separated the publishing. Okay. You know, at that point. <clears throat> okay. So you you guys when when you when you got the call from Black Street, did you say, guys, you know, I've got this call to join Black Street, and they're like, no, come on, stay, or did they say, yeah, go, we, we bless you? What was it? What was it? <laughs> well, yeah, they well they said they said to go. They said to go, and, and you know I wanted to go, and they gave me their blessings, but they weren't happy about that. Oh, uh, no, nah, they wasn't happy. <laughs> but you know, like what I was, the, my whole thing was, I'm saying, listen, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for me, but it could also be an opportunity for for us. You know what I mean? Like, let me go and get in, and then when the time is right. I could bring y'all in because Teddy was Teddy Riley, you know, and, <laughs> and Darren was a dope, he's a dope producer, he's a dope musician. Yeah. So I was like, look, man, like, you know, I could do this Black Street thing and then I could, you know, we could do the, pro the production thing. I could bring y'all in, it could be good. And so that's, you know, they were cool with it, but they wasn't really cool with it. You know okay, I mean? okay, okay. So, but then, yeah, so. and they fell up because did, did Darren then go join Eddie F? And well, Dan, Dan was working with Eddie and KG. I think he's working. Yeah, he started with Eddie, and then I think he went to KG, and then back to Eddie. Like, but you know, Dan was freelancing. He wasn't really. He wasn't part you know, of it. Right. He was. I mean, yeah, he wasn't really like a partner. Partner. Let me not say that because I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. But okay. He, did, he worked. He he worked mostly with Eddie and KG. Okay. Yeah, okay. That. Okay. Okay, and so if for people who don't know, KG is was part of Naughty by Nature, and he came he out with uh, Nature, came yeah. out with He's... Next, Jahim, and uh, Jane. Bobby Brown, Jane. Okay. Well, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So before we get to to Blacks, because there are questions about Blacks, it would be good to go into the the part that people ask about. <laughs> I can't remember who I was speaking to. I think uh, Sprug, <laughs> Doogie, <laughs> was saying, you know, you gave all your best stuff to uh, Jahim and stuff. And others are saying, did Not you ever... Did say that. No, I don't know. No. A lot of the the fans said we they know you for the Jahim stuff because right. he blew up. Um, and they wonder, and some, some asked, did, he, did Eric ever want to go solo? Because Jahim took see, all his best stuff. That's the thing. See, th okay, this is the thing. Yeah, go ahead. I I decided to do a solo album, right? Okay. I decided to do a solo album solely to get my music out. Like it wasn't about me being an artist. It was about me getting the music out, right? Oh, oh what do you mean to get the music out? Like to 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 get publishing. Like it was about it was about that side of the the business. So I figured, okay, I have a voice that people enjoy. Yeah, it's you know again. I don't want to say I don't love to sing because I do, but yeah. if I had my choice, if I could make the money behind the scenes, I would do that. That would yeah. be my first. All right. So when it came to to me doing these songs, I was doing it. I was writing it. So all, most of the stuff Jaheem that I did for Jaheem was for me. Okay, right? it was going to be for me, but I was only doing that. So that I could get my music out. So when Jaheem came along and he was like, yo, I like that. Oh my God, we gotta do this. Let me do that. I was like, but <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's what's up. Okay. And that's that's basically how that works. So I know a lot of people say I gave Jaheem my sound and you know, it like I said, I did the songs because I did all of these recordings because I wanted to get music. I wanted to hear my stuff on the radio. Yeah. I mean, my songs. Yeah, you know yeah. Because I, mean? I, I know that that's where the money is. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when he, you know, he fell in love with all the stuff we were doing, I was like, all right, you know, if, if I need be, I could do some more stuff for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People were mad at me. They was upset with me when I gave it to him. But because he, he, his, his album, he, I mean, he, he, I mean, he, because his style of, you know, it was himself, D'Angelo, Maxwell, there were very few coming out with that style. And he really, he, you know, he, you know, of course, he, 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 he didn't sound like how he looked, but he, right. yeah, but it was a really, I mean, powerful album with, with really, you know, steady songs. And that was very different. What was it like for you seeing the response? how successful his album and all your songs were doing yeah i loved it i mean <laughs> and you know what's crazy the the first single that he came out with is could it be that's a song that me and my me and wes we we produced and um but we didn't pin that record but i oh. pinned the record because i didn't like wes did the beat and i was like i mean it's cool it's all right it didn't really move me like that yeah but it moved them, and they they wrote a they wrote a crazy crazy joint. You know what I'm saying? It, that was a dope record. Wow. Yeah. And then and then, how many tracks did you do it on Jaheim's debut album? On that first album, we did I think nine. Wow. Yeah, eight or nine records on that. Wow. That first. Did he write? Yeah, and what's crazy is what, what's crazy about that album is. Now this is this is this is from Jaheen. Jaheen would say that KG wasn't really feeling. Jaheen wanted to work with me, right? Like KG would give him beats, and Jaheen would be like, "I mean, that's cool, but I want to work with E. I want to go down to Virginia and work with E." So KG was like, "All right, cool. You know, go down there." And KG focused on next. Yeah. Right. So Jaheen came to Virginia for like three months, maybe. And we just banged joints out. And when he came back, when he, you know, when he went back with the records, I, now I wasn't in the meeting, but the <laughs> record company loved the stuff from what I hear. And then KG, so KG was able to come behind what we did, right? So he, so KG was able to hear our records and then go in the studio and make better records. Not to say that it, it wouldn't be better anyway, but he had an advantage as far as getting the singles off the album. You feel me? Yeah. Because, he, yeah, he heard everything that we did, and now he can do three or four songs behind what we did and make sure that they're as good or better. You know what I'm uh, saying? On the Jaheim album. Right. <clears throat> okay. And, and and he'll have a say on which one gets released first and gets the airplay. Well, he's, yeah, he was pretty much the record company anyway. But Yeah. Yeah. But all of those, uh, put that one in, was that on the first album? No. Yeah, just yeah, in so case. Yeah. Just in case. That's what I'm talking about. So just in case came after all the stuff that we did. That's my point. Okay, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So I could yeah, okay. So the, the, he's got a feel for what Jahim sounds like and what he feels yeah, like and then, then it, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. But but then that that part of um producing um, but how, how, what about Donnell? What, 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 what were you doing? How did you? Did Darren call you to say, "E, let's no, meet up"? No, Donnell didn't call. Um, the, Not the Darren. A &R, okay. The, uh, girl by the name of Candy Tooks. Okay, so I met Candy after working on the Usher record, that oh. um, the I Will record. So Candy was the NR for that album, and she came to Virginia and she heard the stuff that we were doing, you know, like because I, I I helped write uh, I Will. <clears throat> for, for Usher and when Darnell came up you know that project came up for her she called me and Wes to come and you know be a part of it and we went down and you know cut a couple joints with him okay. which is those are crazy records too I, I always used to think that Darnell did wrote and did his own all his own stuff but he does yeah he does Darnell he, he's incredible but I think I think at that time that the label didn't want him to to do the whole project. Okay. And I don't, I don't think he was too happy about it either initially. Yeah. Like when we came down and we had to work, it was, you know, it wasn't, he wasn't like really all thrilled about us <laughs> doing it. But um, it, yeah, we, we came up with some good stuff, man. He, you know, Darnell's crazy. He's dope. Yeah. He's dope. Yeah. He's a dope writer and a singer. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, Any yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to his um, 100% free coming out soon. <laughs> his new... <laughs> but, um, so, when you were out in in Virginia, still with the Black Street, you were then also on the side doing your production. Yes. Yes. Okay. Did... Um, so how would you get the calls? Would who would call you up and say, "Come on, Eric, we want you to do this"? Or how would how would that come about? The these projects. I mean, well, I, I mean, we didn't do many projects outside of um, Darnell and 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 Jaheen. Like Jaheen just kept coming back to us, so you know, what I mean, that's how we got so many joints. But um, yeah, we we weren't like listen. We would we would do our music because it's what we love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we weren't doing tracks and sending them to, to record labels. You know, I got a song for such and okay. such. It wasn't okay. like that. It was people were calling us. Like, people would hear stuff we were doing or, you know, they would come to Virginia and then we would be around and, you know, they would hear something and be like, yo, let's, let's hook up. And that's how that went. Even with, even with Rel, like, I did a couple joints with Rel, too. I don't know if you, you know Rel from Rockefeller. No, no, no. No? Rel was crazy too. Okay. The yeah, um, but... <clears throat> somebody asks, and I might as well ask now. Did you work with Tupac? Yeah, I did a, um, I did a, a feature with Tupac. Don't ask me the name of the song. <laughs> and it's not because it's it's not a dope song. It's just you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't remember songs like that. The question they asked was, "How is? Did you meet up with him? And no, how is no. it?" Yeah, he, he already passed away. Okay, okay, okay. Because they asked, I "How is it?" I mean, I met him before, but I, you know, I don't have a relationship with him. Now. Okay, because they did. Someone asked, so they asked Eric, "How is it like working with Tupac?" And I, and so that's why I was, I, 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 I sort of brought that up. But that, that was kind of crazy, though. How that happened? That was, that was a blessing. I wasn't expecting it, but you know, the record, the record company wanted me. I did the the uh the song with Queen Pan on her album. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's um never too much. The 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 Luther. Yeah, oh my love. I oh my love. The that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my love. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, Interscope wanted me to do this with Tupac, and they they made it happen. So, is it after they um? Is it not do for you? Do for love. Do for love. Is that what you did? Yeah, do for love. Okay, do for love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, huh? yeah no, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a big, love. it was a big hit. It was a big track. Yeah, it's a big record, right? How did how come you got to do the the track with King Pin, Queen Pin? Yeah, that was something Teddy wanted. Yeah, you know, Teddy was the producer, so yeah. he called me and yo, I need you to do this hook, and I was like, I bet. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um. I mean, we 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 can we can go to 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 Black Street, but before we do get to Black Street, were you also still keeping in touch with today and Bob and Breadhead and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so yeah, when can, when that when yeah. that whole thing, you know, the whole GR collapsed and everything, you were in a flex, and you were watching when the whole you know they had this massive empire which. I, you know, I tell people that, you know, people think about Bad Boy and No Limits and Social Death, but I think GR Production had, you know, Abstract, they had Rex and Effect, Guy, Today, Basic Black, they had, yeah. um, you know, they, they were looking like they were just going to grow and, and just take over, but right. looking in, did you see, could you see what was happening? And no, no, not see what was happening, but what, 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 how did you feel when you saw today too big the first album big second they had um uh, yeah the second album i'm thinking but uh, the, the song for house party 2 was um why you why you getting yeah, funky yeah. i mean which was yeah. a massive hit and then it didn't work out for them did you then think wow this is the business i need to be careful or oh yeah absolutely like i i knew all the stuff that was pretty much going on because of my relationship with bob and bernard and and even when I got the call to to uh you know to go to Virginia for Black Street, mm. you know, I had I had there were conversations, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Not not necessarily that I wanted to hear it, but it was it was it was nothing but love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, look, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see what happened with us, you know what I mean? Just you know. So yeah, you know, and I, 
you know, I took what they, I took the advice they gave me, and, you know, I decided to do it anyway. Mm -hmm.